Guys, welcome to the Mary Boozers RC channel. Today we have another wonderful slot car upgrade for you guys. Uh, we have the tech slots coming. So you guys that want to be able to run analog and digital cars all on the same track, this is a fantastic option for you guys. Uh, it's literally a plug and play. You take your old MC board out, you put your new control unit in, and you are off to racing with both analog and digital. Uh, we're going to be going over a few of the different features in it tonight and show you how this actually works. So without further ado, let's get down on the track and start taking a look at this thing. So here we are down on the track. We have some of our other selections of cars that you may not be used to seeing out here if you're running only Carrera. Um, don't get me wrong, I love my Carrera digital cars, but there's some other offerings that are really cool from some of the other brands if you look around on eBay. So like this is a fly car. This is a scale electrics car. This is a fly semi truck. Um, and then we've got three of our old Carrera cars. So the cool thing is with this little piece right here, we can now run any of these cars on our track. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I run over at a slot car club in Lakeland, Florida called slot tracks. You can check them out on Facebook. They have a Facebook page uh, and they all run analog cars. So they have a four lane analog track. So I've got a bunch of these analog cars now that I run down at the slot car track, but I sure would wanted to run them here at my house. Well, I was stumbling around online and I came across a gentleman and it was called Tech Slots and I started looking into this and it looked like the perfect thing for what I was trying to do to where I could drive some of my analog cars for the club down in Lakeland here at my home track. You know, sometimes you want to set up your car, you want to drive it, make sure everything's right before you get to the race. And this was a fantastic option for it. So I'm going to show you how this works. We'll run a couple of these cars around the track. And so you can see if this might be the solution for your problem of being able to run both all on one track. All right. So, we have this track all installed now. All we did to put our tech slot in was pop out our main control unit board, put the new control unit board in with the tech slot adapter already installed, and now this track can run both analog and digital cars. That's as simple as this is. It is one of the easiest upgrades you can ever do on this. Uh, so now let's go into actually working the track. So it turns on just like always where you've got your flip switch right here. You turn your track on. Currently, I have both of my selector switches in the neutral position. This is actually a three position switch, so there's always a on, off, on, between going between modes. So right now, if I wanted to run a digital car, which this is a digital car, I'd switch this to the digital position, put my car on the track, everything works as normal. So if I needed to code the car, I'd hit code uh, right there. I'd pull my trigger, this would code the car, and now I'm off to racing. Just like always, you can lane change, you can do all the things you're used to doing on your digital track. This sets it up, you can run up to six cars. So this is for the digital mode. If you're curious about learning how to set up the digital portion of this unit, it sets up the same way as I did in our beginning to Carrera set. Uh, I'll try and link that down in the description. We have a video all about setting up the cars and all of that. Right now we're really only focused on our tech slot box. So that's how the digital cars work with the tech slot. No change, it's all the same as it was. Now the fun part is we can now switch from this down to analog mode. We turn our A power on. You can see now that I've got a red and a green light. Now if I wanted to code, what you do is this is separate from each other. So this will still stay connected to this yellow car when I'm in the anal or the uh, digital mode. Sorry, it gets a little confusing talking about this. But if I wanted to, I could also code these to each track. I've already done it, but I'll show you it here in just a minute. I have one controller coded to each lane currently. So if I were to take an, dig an analog car now and put it on the track, wrong side, it's on this one. So here you go. You can see now that this analog car works also. This is my Back to the Future Scale Electric analog car, and it works. Now, this is not digital, so you cannot put it on either lane right now. So if I put it on the other side, nothing works. This is just like the old school tracks right now. So all of my lane changes are off right now, 
and you can only run one car per lane. But this is the analog style, like I said. Uh, the cars are quite a bit more uh, affordable. Some guys want to have some of the cars that aren't offered in the analog cars or in the digital cars. This is a good way to do it. Now, some of the cars, like the Scale Electrix, they come where you can put a chip in the bottom of them. But the chip's like 40 bucks. And if you have a whole fleet of cars, sometimes it's nice to just be able to run some of your old analog stuff and you don't want to convert it. You know, I don't race my DeLorean, but I still want to run it every once in a while. And you can see all the features still work. The lights still come on just like they're supposed to. Uh, yeah, so I mean it's really cool and at the flip of a switch, so here's the big deal. Make sure you take the analog cars off the track before you switch. Because if you switch from analog to digital, I'm going to hold the car, it'll run in reverse. As soon as you change it and this thing will go flying across. So make sure your analog cars are off the track before you switch between analog and digital. So now we're back to digital. Put the car on the track. There it is. Look at how easy that is. Same controller too. So you don't have to recode between going from analog to digital. Uh, you know, I could still take and put any car I wanted on this track as long as it's coded to the yellow controller and go drive it. Once again, we take our digital car off. We switch our power down to analog. So one, two analog. We turn our A main power on. This turns on the two chips that are inside of this. And what this is acting like is a chip car all over the track. So now I'm back to this and I can run my uh, analog cars. I mean, it's really cool, guys. Uh, and, and if this is an option that'd be working for you like it has for me, it's great. Uh, and you can still race. You can do two cars. You can code another controller to the other lane. And then you can run two cars side by side and you can race analog just like you race digital. The only difference is you can only run two cars and you cannot use your lane changers. But it gives you that option now to play with so many of these cool other cars from other brands that weren't ever digital. It's a really fun option, guys. All right, let's go into actually coding the controllers now and we will show you how that works. So the next part that we're going to talk about is just like your digital car features where you can program speed and braking that now carries over to your analog cars using this system also so right now i have the yellow controller coded to the green lane the green lane is my outside lane i have the red controller coded to the blue lane which is the red car right now um, so just like what you're used to uh, you can code the cars individually. Basically what you're thinking of is that track is a car right now and this track is a code right now. So if I hold this button, you'll see it turns off this lane and I'm only coding whatever lane is held down. So if I wanted to adjust the truck speed right now, I'd click on my regular board like we're used to. Speed, I have one through 10. Let's bump him up to two. I'm gonna hit start, and that's gonna code our truck to that speed. So now if I pick up the yellow, you can see I can almost hold it almost all the way down. Whoops. Let's put him over here and let him go by. So here's, you know, almost full speed. That's his full speed right now. Now, if I were to take, I don't recommend you run it this fast with the truck, but if I held the button, coded my speed up to like seven, sorry, that's six, start. Now the truck really boogity boogities. And the same thing, if I wanted to do my Ferrari now, I would hold the Ferrari's blue lane, speed, pick it to whatever I want, say speed one, start. And it, it barely moves on speed one, you can see. There you go, speed one, barely moving. Now each car is different and that's the nice thing is you can program it how you want it. So let's go code lane blue, speed, let's go up to like five, six, start. 
and now you can see it's moving a lot better. Same thing if we wanted to do the braking systems for the car, hold the lane you want to do. Right now we're doing the Ferrari, which is our blue lane. So we're gonna hold that. We're gonna set our braking. I like mine really low, start. And now the brakes are set and the car slides down the track when you get done. So it's really nice. So a lot of your digital features actually carry over to this. I mean, it's crazy guys. Uh, they really thought this out very well. So next segment, we're gonna talk about our controllers and how to set them up to the box. All right, now that you kind of have an understanding of how all the tech slot works, let's show you how to code it. So once again, if you're curious about how to code digital cars on a digital track, refer to our old videos. We're gonna really only be talking about our analog box today. So right now, currently, both lanes are programmed to one controller. You can see both cars take off when I do that. Well, I don't wanna do that. I wanna have two different controllers for two different lanes. So we're gonna keep the yellow controller on the green lane. And what I'm gonna do now is code the box to the controller I want. So all I have to do is hold the lane I want to code. The light will turn off from the other one. Hit the code button, just like what we're used to. This puts it in code mode. Now I'm gonna pull this, you're gonna see this is gonna blink just like your car's lights would, and now you let go. And now we have this controller coded to one lane, and this controller coded to the other lane. Oop, there it goes. Took it a minute to turn on. Sometimes it does that with these uh, digital controllers. I don't know why. Now it's working fine. They're on, they're awake. There you go. But you can see, I now have two different lanes. Vice versa, if you want the other colors around, you just would code the other way, however you want to do that. But yeah, two controllers now for two different lanes. So, once again, if you take and you put this car on the other lane, they'll still run, but you have to use whatever controller goes to that lane. So you can see the red lane is still this side, so it doesn't matter. So you can't lane change. Remember that as you're in analog, this is just so you can run your older cars and it's, it's a great option. The other thing you need to think about is whenever you switch between digital to analog, any of your track accessories will turn off. So like I have the charger unit setting right here beside my unit. If I'm in the analog mode, my controllers cannot charge right now. When you want to charge up your stuff that's attached to the track power, you will have to be back in digital mode. Just something to think about if you get this option. All right, so let's talk about some of the other options that are available when you get a tech slot kit. So one of the options that are available when you purchase your tech slot kit is a lane counting section. So this is the standard Carrera new control unit that comes with every kit. You can see there's one little dot here and one little dot here. These are little IR sensors for the cars to uh, communicate with. So let me move this out of the way now. Here is the tech slot unit. You can see there's two dots now. What that is, it's just an IR sensor pointed up and an IR receiver that's the one that came with the track. What this does, is as an analog car goes over the top of it, this bounces a signal up and off the car back down to it so that you still can get a lane counter. This works with the Carrera app and with the Race Connect app, so you can still count laps as you're racing now with your analog cars. So if you still wanna race your analog cars, this is an awesome option. Uh, this is an additional fee when you buy this track to get this option installed. Uh, he does make every one of these by hand. This is a very neat system. But yeah, if you wanna be able to count, that's what you'll do. And he gives you, when you order it, let me get this right here. He gives you this little piece of paper when you get it and it shows that you need to take, let me focus just a little bit. You need to take a little piece of this silver tape and put it on your analog car where your IR sensor would normally be on any of your digital cars. So if you look at a digital car, you see that's where the IR is. Let me get a little focus here. See the IR sensor there. So when you're looking at a 
di an analog car, it doesn't have that. So you need to put a little piece of this silver right here for it to reflect off of. So that's what that is. But you could still do your lap counting now using all of your equipment you already have by using this option. I highly, highly recommend you get that option in your track. It really is nice to be able to still race your analog cars if you want. Um, so I like that and you can still do lap times and that kind of things. So that is one of the additional options you can get with this kit. So let's talk about one other option that's available. This is what's called his chaos box when you get from tech slot. This connects right into the front of, let me see here, your tech slot box. It just screws in. It comes with a nice long cable on it so you could route this wherever you want on the track. You could hard mount it. I keep mine as a, a handheld unit so somebody can hold this. But the nice thing is this is a marshalling box. So you can have somebody watching the race and if there's a crash, you can stop the race by hitting this button. This turns off the cars on the track. You can see my car is now turned off. In order for you to do this, you can also, just to show you this, it comes to where you can daisy chain these together. So you can buy additional ones of these and have several marshals around the track. You know, a lot of tracks you want to have two marshals. What this does is when you hit the big red button, it locks out all the cars so nobody can go crashing into each other. It also locks out the other marshals from starting the race. You can't start the race again until whoever pushed the button turns this knob. That unclicks the button, you can hit go, and now you're off to racing again. This is a really, really cool option that I wish that we had from the beginning. On, on, if you don't have this, the only way to stop and pause a race is either from the app screen or from the control unit, you have to hit the start button. But it's a little tiny button that you can never find when you're trying to when you're racing. So this is awesome because this is a big red button. You know, you're racing and somebody hits that button and it stops all traffic on the track. This works for either analog or digital. So if you have this unit, you can use this whether you're running in the analog mode or the digital mode. This is so cool. <laughs> One of my favorite, favorite things about having this, you know, the analog part is amazing. I love being able to run my cars, but I use this on every single race we use this. And, and it's so nice. I have some Velcro on it. Because like I said, I keep this to where it's, it's being able to be held, but if we're not using it, I stick it right here beside the control unit on a little platform, and then they've got a big red button for anybody to hit. Once again, cars are off, you twist it. This will also start and stop the race counter on the, on the uh, race apps. So just so you know, this actually works as a caution button. So hit the button, and now the cars work again. Hit this red button. You can see all the lights come on. We're in pause mode. Fantastic, see? Race starts again. Race stopped. It's that simple, guys. Race going. There you go. Isn't that so cool? All right, guys. A few last minute things to consider when looking at the tech slot box for your track. Uh, when the CU unit is in the analog mode. Track accessories plugged straight into the CU will work, but nothing else on the track will. So if you want uh, like your charger or your lap counting tower, those will have to be directly plugged into the board if you want them to work when you have it in analog mode. In digital mode, they all work like normal. Um, the other thing I want you all to think about is if you have power taps, they have to be isolated. So, uh, and any of your track accessories that are in the track need to be isolated. The double lane changers are fine as they come out of the box, but if you have a curved lane change, you will have to modify those curved lane changes to make them isolated. Um, they have some great instructions over on the TechSlot Facebook page if you want to do that. If you're like me, I don't have any curved lane changes in my layout, so I did not have to modify anything on that. Um, and the last thing you want to really think about is uh, the anti-collision sensors. If any of you guys have installed those on your tracks, uh, you will have to modify those also. Um, Digital Racing Solutions has a workaround for it though. If you want to run the anti-collision crash sensors on your lane changers, they do have 
a way to make those work. So those are a couple things you might want to think about before you get this unit. Um, just wanted you to know. So if you have any questions about any of that, please reach out to the TechSlot Facebook page before you make your purchase and make sure you know how to do that. So there you go, guys, the TechSlot. This is such a cool, cool unit and such a nice option to be able to run so many more cars on your digital track. Um, if you're interested in it, he has a Facebook group. You can look it up. It's Tech Slots on Facebook. Uh, he answers all the questions you could ever have about this, and you can also IM him directly. These are also available at CarreraSlots.com for the United States customers. I'll have that link down in the description. They keep these in stock. Um, if you're interested in it, guys, this is definitely a worthy option. Uh, very cool to be able to run all these different things. I love I love the Chaos Box, and, and I'm sure he's going to have more stuff coming in the future. Uh, this guy is developing a lot of really cool stuff for the Carrera system. So if you're interested, like I said, check out those links. Uh, if you are interested in becoming a Boozer Barracks member, think about doing that. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We do all kinds of the Carrera stuff. We do RC airplanes, RC trucks, RC boats. We do it all. So if you're interested, check us out. Please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends if this is something they could use, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks.